Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture. In the last lecture, we learnt about the selection rules of a harmonic oscillator. So, we learnt about the selection rules of harmonic oscillator. We saw that the specific selection rule is delta V equals plus minus 1. As all the energy levels in a harmonic oscillator are equally spaced, this means that the IR spectrum should have a single line. But when we see the experimental spectrum of HCl, we do not see a single peak. But what is observed is a series of peaks with diminishing intensity. This is because real molecules do not exactly follow simple harmonic motion or we can say they do not obey Hooke's law. If we look into the potential function of the harmonic oscillator, when the bond length is increased, the molecule oscillates more vigorously. This is because with increase in the bond length, that is with increase in the displacement from the equilibrium position, the energy increases and ideally if we stretch a real bond too much, it will get to a stage where it breaks. So, if you draw a molecule and this is a bond connecting these two atoms. If we stretch this molecule too much, at some point this bond will break or in other words, the molecule should dissociate. This bond breaking is the basis of chemical reactions or we can say this bond breaking is the basis of chemistry. But in the harmonic oscillator model, the potential energy curve as we can see is a parabola. A parabola does not allow the bond to dissociate. Thus, we can see that harmonic approximation fails in real molecules. So, we can say that vibrational motion for large displacement is anharmonic. That means, that is not harmonic. So, this is anharmonic in the sense that the restoring force is no longer proportional to the displacement as we saw in case of harmonic oscillator. Thus, we need to introduce a more realistic potential function to reflect that the bond dissociates if we have R is greater than or much greater than R equilibrium. Moreover, the nuclei repel each other when the bond gets much smaller than the equilibrium bond length or in other words, the nuclei repel each other when R is less than, less than R equilibrium. So, the potential is much steeper than what predicted from the harmonic oscillator model. So, let us say we have this is our harmonic potential at R less less than R equilibrium, the potential will be much steeper. So, the harmonic oscillator also implies that the nuclei goes through each other which does not make any sense. So, the potential energy surface that we really want is that which becomes steeper 
at smaller internuclear distances that is in this region and which become shallower that means it should become shallower at larger internuclear distances that is in these regions and these properties in the potential energy surface reflect repulsion and dissociation. So, this part reflects repulsion and this part reflects dissociation. So, one of the simplest functions that has been introduced to represent these properties is known as the Morse potential. So, it is known as the Morse potential. Let us look at this figure, the black line here. So, this black line is meant to illustrate the true potential. We can see the equilibrium bond length is the minimum of the potential function and we have something called d e. This d e is the dissociation energy. The subscript e in d e means it is the dissociation energy from the equilibrium position. The peculiarity of this dissociation energy is that it cannot be directly measured from experiments. This is because the molecules are never at the bottom of the energy well. The lowest energy they can possibly have is the zero point energy or the energy at V equals 0, which in the harmonic oscillator was given by half h nu or nu bar by 2. The zero point energy as we can see is slightly above the bottom of the energy well. So, we never really measured d e, what we measure the dissociation energy from the zero point energy level or the v equals 0 level. Thus, d e is the sum of the measured dissociation energy. So, this is the sum of the measured dissociation energy plus the 0 point energy. So, if you focus on the harmonic potential curve that is given by this orange dotted curve, we can see that the harmonic potential represents nicely the true and harmonic potential that is the black curve at the bottom part of the potential energy well. That is why the harmonic potential works well for the low vibrational states. That is the vibrational quantum number that is when the vibrational quantum number v is small. In other words, as long as the displacement is small, the harmonic oscillator will work. The Morse potential has the right kind of shape. So, the Morse potential is this blue curve. So, this has the right kind of shape, but does not perfectly match the true and harmonic potential. In general, it is not quite as steep as the true potential as the nuclei gets closer and closer. We see the difference here. Moreover, there is slight mismatch as seen from this figure at larger internuclear separation. In other words, the Morse potential is purely an empirical expression that fits the curve corresponding to the true potential to a good approximation. 
the expression for the Mohr's potential is given by V of R is d e times 1 minus e to the power minus a r minus r equilibrium whole squared. So, here a is a constant. So, a is a constant and d e is the dissociation energy. So, at the equilibrium position that means, at r equals r equilibrium, we have r minus r equilibrium equals 0. So, we can write v of r equals d e times 1 minus e to the power 0 squared and as we know that the exponential term that is e to the power 0 is 1. So, we have d e times 1 minus 1 squared. So, this becomes 0. So, the potential becomes 0 and thus it is a minimum. Now, if we have the condition that r tends to infinity. So, when r tends to infinity r minus r equilibrium is also infinity. So, the exponential term that we have or we can write v of r equals d e 1 minus e to the power minus infinity squared and as we know e to the power minus infinity is 0. So, what we have that is v of r is d e. So, the potential equals the dissociation energy from the equilibrium position. Now, if we actually consider the case where r is less than less than r equilibrium. So, for r less than less than r equilibrium, the potential increases exponentially, which is an improvement over the harmonic oscillator. So, the Mohr's potential has the properties we are looking for. It does have a dissociation energy associated with it and it does have a minimum at r equals r equilibrium. We have another parameter that is a we have this parameter a in this Mohr's potential. So, this a is a property of the molecule and changes from molecule to molecule. As a gets bigger, the potential gets steeper at, at both large and small internuclear distances. In essence, a is a fitting parameter. So, there is no significant theory which underpins what it should be. It is an empirical value obtained from observation. If the potential energy form of the Mohr's potential is used in the Schrodinger equation instead of half k x square, an analytical solution can be obtained. The solution to the Schrodinger equation reveals that the vibrational levels are quantized. So, the solution can be written as we can write nu bar v that equals v plus half nu bar e minus v plus half whole squared nu bar e chi e. So, the solution is very similar to the one we had before and this chi e is known as the anharmonicity constant. So, the first term is the harmonic oscillator term 
an additional term is obtained from the Mohr's potential. So, which has v plus half square dependence. Thus, for very large values of v, where the harmonic oscillator does not work very well, the second term becomes more and more important. The value of the second term becomes larger as compared to the first term because of the v plus half square dependence rather than v plus half dependence. And this nu bar e chi e factor is a small number. The anharmonicity constant is essentially the perturbation we are applying to the harmonic problem to take into account of the anharmonicity and this chi e is unit less, but this nu bar e has the unit of wave numbers. So, nu bar e chi e together they have the unit of wave numbers. So, the second term in general is a small perturbation to the vibrational energy. For small values of v, we can ignore this part and just have the harmonic oscillator part. This corroborates with the fact that for small values of v, it should tend to the harmonic solution. In case of harmonic oscillator, we used nu bar. So, we wrote nu bar v for harmonic oscillator, we wrote v plus half nu bar. But for an harmonic oscillator, we have used nu bar e instead. So, nu bar e is not something we can measure from the spectrum. It is something we have to derive by fitting this equation to the spectral data. So, we can say this is a hypothetical frequency. It is the frequency the molecule will be vibrating if the molecule was at the bottom of the potential energy well. When the molecule is in v equals 0, that is not at the bottom of the potential energy well, but at v equals 0, it will not be vibrating quite at that frequency. So, nu bar in the harmonic oscillator model, what we have used this nu bar is the frequency in wave number of the photon absorbed when the molecule goes from v equals 0 to v equals 1. So, let us try to see the relation between nu bar and nu bar e. So, what we want to see is a relation between nu bar and nu bar e. So, we can write this expression as nu bar v equals and if we take v plus half nu bar e common, what we have is 1 minus v plus half chi e. So, now if we compare with the energy level of the harmonic oscillator or let us say we compare with this expression, we can see that nu bar equals nu bar e times 1 minus v plus half chi e. Thus, the anharmonic oscillator behaves like the harmonic oscillator, but the oscillation frequency decreases steadily with increase in v. In fact, when we have a let us say we have a hypothetical energy state that is v equals minus half. So, at v equals minus half, 
the nu bar becomes equal to nu bar e. So, because nu bar equals nu bar e, the molecule will be at equilibrium at 0 vibrational energy. Thus, nu bar e can be defined as the hypothetical equilibrium oscillation frequency of the anharmonic system. That is the frequency for infinitely small vibrations about the equilibrium point, but for any real vibrational state where V is positive, the energy is given by this expression. So, thus in the ground state we have nu bar equals nu bar E times 1 minus half chi E and the 0 point energy which is given by half nu bar is half nu bar E 1 minus half chi E. So, we can see that the 0 point energy differs slightly in the anharmonic oscillator from the 0 point energy of the harmonic oscillator. So, let us look at the expression for the Morse potential again. So, we know the expression is given by V of R equals the dissociation energy d E times 1 minus e to the power minus a r minus r equilibrium whole squared. So, we can write this if we take x equals r minus r equilibrium, we can write d e 1 minus e to the power minus x or a x whole squared. And now, if we expand e to the power minus x and put that expansion here, then we can simplify this as d e times minus a x whole squared. So, this becomes d e a squared x squared or we can write this as half 2 d e a squared times x squared. So, comparing this expression, if I compare this expression with let us say half k x squared, we get that the force constant that is k for anharmonic oscillator is given by 2 d e times s squared. So, is if we substitute this in our vibrational frequency, we get nu e if you go back to this expression 1 by 2 pi root over k by mu. So, we can write k and harmonic here. So, what we can write is 1 by 2 pi root over 2 d e a squared divided by mu. So, the question is how has this changed the energy levels? The energy expression by taking into account of an harmonicity is given by we know this is nu bar v is v plus half nu bar e minus v plus half whole squared nu bar e chi e. So, this is a perturbation to the harmonic solution. So, let us compare the harmonic and the anharmonic solution. So, on the left we have the harmonic solution and on the right we have the anharmonic solution that is coming from the Morse 
oscillator. So, the anharmonicity constant is a positive number. So, we are subtracting a positive number from the harmonic energies. So, the lines of the energy levels on the right hand side are steadily getting closer and closer together as the value of the vibrational quantum number increases due to the v plus half square dependence of the anharmonic term. So, we can see that for v equals 0, we have this term that is 1 by 4. Now, it increases to 9 by 4 for v equals 1 to 25 by 4 to 49 by 4. So, the energy levels are coming closer and closer. Thus, as we are going to higher and higher vibrational energies, the energy levels are getting closer and closer together as we approach the dissociation limit. In terms of spectroscopy, now that we know the energies of any level, we can calculate the frequencies of any transition. So, the fundamental frequency that is for v equals 0 to v equals 1 transition for the anharmonic case, what we have? We have 3 by 2 nu bar e minus 9 by 4 nu bar e chi e. So, this is for v equals 1 minus half nu bar e minus 1 fourth nu bar e chi e. So, this is the frequency of the transition and if we simplify this, what we get is nu bar e minus 2 nu bar e chi e. So, this differs from the harmonic solution in the second term. So, the fundamental thing is that the energy levels are not equally spaced. As we approach the dissociative limit, the levels get closer and closer. So, we can imagine that there is a maximum vibrational quantum number beyond which it will dissociate. Finally, I would like to say that the molecule is vibrating very nearly at the same frequency independent of which vibrational state it is in. The reason the molecule has more vibrational energy in higher vibrational states is because it is stretching and compressing over a wider range and this requires more energy. <laughs>